can't see it on camera, but there's some stupid little snowflakes falling out there and it's getting proper cold. I had to go out to the warehouse today because they were replacing the door, but then they screwed it up, so they had to come back. And then they still didn't do everything today. So in theory, I have to go back again tomorrow, but the alternator on my van locked up. So I might just give them permission to enter and then watch on the cameras, I don't know. Anyways, I was trying to figure out something to film today. So we're gonna do sort of a fleet update and also update about some projects and things in the future. I, uh, th there's a number of new viewers to the channel. Some of this may be a bit of a, re a repeat to people that have been watching for years, some of the stories and things about the chairs and whatnot. But anyways, we're gonna head out to the warehouse. Well, actually, I've already been out there. I'm filming this after the fact, but we're gonna go out there and I'm gonna talk about a few of the chairs and whatnot. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy. Oh, apparently is morning or another day or something. Anyhow, as you can see, I'm at the warehouse. They're doing some work on the door. It got replaced, but then some stuff needs to be fixed. And now it's got a two inch door sill plate. So I don't know, something about asphalt ramps. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, while I was here, I figured I need to film something, but I still don't have a huge amount of energy. I've been having quite an issue with my neck over the last week or so. Uh, so, I get the idea from all the automotive YouTubers out there. Let's do a fleet update. <laughs> there's, there's a fair number of chairs in here, and um, I guess I could briefly talk about them real quick, and maybe why I have them and stuff. So, anyways, um, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Oh, and two quick housekeeping things. One, nothing you see is for sale. Please don't ask. I know people always see a whole building full of chairs or a garage full of chairs, and it's like, oh, can you sell me this, can you sell me that? Or you should donate this, or you should donate that. No, all the stuff I have is so I can make these videos and so I can write repair manuals and film videos on how to repair stuff. I realize it's been a little while since I've done a repair video, but once again, life keeps getting in the way. We'll get back to it soon enough. But I get, I have hundreds of conversations weekly going on with people, and I use all of these chairs to be able to take photos and measure parts and show people how to do stuff, and also for my own research and learning purposes. Two, yes, the warehouse is a mess. Um, I would like to get some racking or shelving or whatever set up, um, but 75% of the people I know in the state of Oregon have left. So I don't have a lot of help to do a lot of this stuff. And um, yeah, I, I don't want to seem like I'm raging or something about it, but anytime I posted a video, anything close to this, there's always a little bit of weirdness going on. So anyways, just so you know, I know you guys are great. Majority of everyone that's watching, you guys are awesome. And I appreciate all your support and everything with, you know, channel memberships and Patreon and getting stuff with the wish list and all that. Like, like I said, this bus project would not have been possible uh, without the help from you guys. But anyways, um, yeah, nothing's for sale. And yeah, I know it's a mess. I suppose we will start with the chair that's closest to me right here. Longtime viewers might recognize this thing. This is a Quantum Q6 Edge 1. And this is, let's see, I guess my backup, backup, backup chair right now. Um, but this thing has motion concept seating on it that I retrofitted on there. I had temporarily kind of retuned this thing and used it for soccer a while back. But as you can see, it's this hideous shade of faded yellow. It used to be a lot brighter, um, but yeah, whatever, that's faded. We've got the uh, Motion Concepts Ultra Low seating with the Helix Sigma seating controller on here. But it has tilt, recline, and power legs. This seating was originally on my first power chair, which was an Invacare TDX SI2. And it was always set up with these unlabeled buttons right here. I don't know if you can see those or not. But you press and hold to go one way, let go. Press and hold to go the other way. This seating was never really designed to go on this chair. I'll tilt it back here and show you. If you can see here, there's a series of bolts that are probably smaller than they should be, 
with a bunch of spacers. And those are on each side because this chair uses a four post system and the rail that was attached to the seating wasn't wide enough. So I just ran a whole bunch of those spacers on both sides and it seemed to get the job done. That's one of those things where ordinarily, if I was setting up a chair for someone, I would never do that because I believe those are quarter 20 bolts, maybe smaller than that. But um, yeah, anyways, let's tilt this back down here. Yeah, and even when the seating controller is on the Invacare chair, it never interfaced with the electronics. So that's why there's a separate power switch. We've got the Goodwill Special DeWalt job site radio slash battery charger here. I think it still works. So I think that's why it's different because a lot of conservatives don't. Yeah, we'll just turn that back off. So anyways, this thing uses Group 22 batteries. They're pretty old. Uh, maximum range that I've ever gotten on this thing was, well, I've never gone four miles with it. I know that. So I think it was like 3.6 or 3.8 miles or something like that. I swapped over QLogic 1 electronics on this. That was a whole thing that took forever to get set up properly. But anyways, there's that chair. Uh, what am I doing with it? Uh, I guess it's just a backup, like I said, backup, backup, backup chair. Since I've got my F3 now, this thing's been pretty reliable. And honestly, I haven't had this chair break or anything yet but this would be one of my backups if this chair I'm sitting in uh, was not functioning properly. Actually, this would be second in line. I've got a C300 that's in the bus. That would be my other backup chair first before this one. Um, anyways, uh, what's next? Oh yeah, so here's the test bench. Uh, this obviously isn't really a chair. I made a separate video about this. I will link that up above. But just a brief overview, I've got three different control systems on here. There's Arnett, QLogic 1, and the Invacare Mark 6 electronics. And I've got all three associated controllers there. And then each one I can plug into the batteries if we need to power something up. Like, for example, if we want to run this Arnett, these uh, permobile motors over here, I can just plug this in right here. Then we can power this up. It's going to throw a bunch of errors, probably. Yeah, I... I've got an old ICS module that I screwed up. And then if we start moving, we've got some C300 motors mounted over here. And likewise, if we want to run something else like the Invacare, hang on, this requires two hands. There we go, that one's plugged in now. And the other nice thing with this is I can use this to program and test SD cards because it has a slot there on top. Uh, charge batteries. Okay, these batteries are not very good, so these Oh, there we go. Those make a lovely sound. So you hear that noise? <laughs> those motors were from my first power chair. Just before I got rid of it, those were replacement motors and I used the chair for maybe a week and that's how they sound. So those things have basically, I don't know, less than 10 miles on them, but yeah, these, these older style motors were not the best thing in the world. Okay, enough about this, uh, next chair. Next up over here, we've got the original off-road chair that I built. Also did a separate video about that one, which I will link up above and down below. You can only link so many cards on a video, so all the links for these will be down below. But this is the one that I specifically built to be able to go to wrecking yards. Might be able to see there in the back, it's got some extended casters and stuff. But that thing is still running the original batteries plus batteries that I put in there back in 2012. Um, there's a little bit of air missing in that tire, so it's sitting crooked, but not sure what I'm doing with that thing, but it's still sitting here for now. I swapped over the Mark V Invacare electronics on this thing. Uh, you can see the shark dynamic joystick there, um, but that thing's just kind of sitting here idle right now. If I need a chair that I don't care about at all and need to go somewhere with crazy terrain, that thing will work. Only problem is it's too wide to fit on any wheelchair lift. So yeah, that. So I'm just realizing as I'm going around here with all this stuff that I've done videos on a lot of these chairs already. There's the Omega Track. I'll link the video about that one. That's just a really cool chair. 
and I'm gonna hang on to it now that I have the space. It's uh, got a really interesting control system on it. It uses a locked axle in the front that's chopped down and it has a motor on the spider gears to make it steer and then another motor to go forward and back. So this one's a little, like the electronics are a little weak in it, so the chair is not super powerful. But when these things were new, they had crazy amounts of torque and could go off road. Oh, and it has air suspension. It has airbags that you can lift up and down. Actually, let me see. Let me see if we can fire up the air compressor on this thing. I also put these different foot plates on it. Of course, that also had its own video. <laughs> uh, let's see here. There we go, I think you can see that moving. Uh, the batteries are a little old in that one. Yeah, I probably need to charge the batteries in this. The air compressor valves in this have a bit of a low voltage problem. So unless it's plugged into power, um, the valves don't click and it won't jump back up. But as you can see now, the thing's sitting down further, but airbag suspension, premium ride, premium ride quality on that thing. But boy, is it heavy. Holy cow, I haven't weighed that thing. But uh, I have not yet encountered a wheelchair lift that will pick this thing up. Um, yeah. I mean, just, sorry, potato vision, but just look at the thickness of the metal back there. So anyways, uh, link down below for that one as well. <laughs> uh, there's the Bounder, self-explanatory. Um, I still use this fairly frequently if I'm doing any sort of long distance running or trail runs or whatever. Um, I'm going to be getting a new bounder sometime here soon. I know I've been saying that for a couple of years, but worldwide weirdness and everything screwed up supply chains. So, yeah. Um, here we have the soccer chair. This is the redacted force because reasons. Kind of an inside story there, but um, one of my friends had some, well, we'll just say the company that builds that chair got a little bit litigious with him because he built his own. Anyways, we won't go into that, but there's a soccer chair. The guard for it's over there somewhere, but uh, these things are stupid fun, obviously. <laughs> then we've got old Dusty over here. And by the way, Joe, your battery tender cables are right here. I'm gonna try and get those off here today and I'll get those back to you. Um, but someone gave me this chair. It was custom built for being used at Burning Man. So it's got big tires. It's a Ranger X, I believe. It's got the really old school electronics on it. So the plan with this one is gonna to be to swap it over to Mark VI Electronics. I've got another complete control system in here that we can put on that thing. Uh, I should be able to bring that back to life. It's got the big Recaro seat on it and stuff, but yeah, that thing is a beast. And then how could we forget the wheelchair Traeger? This was built out of necessity or rather pragmatism. I don't know, words. So I wound up getting a brand new little Tex um, Traeger. I think this was back in like 2013 or something. And at the time they had these little skinny legs and these things would just constantly fall over. If you filled this with, you know, 20 pounds of pellets and tried to push it down the driveway or into your car or something, the whole thing would just tip over constantly. And I had this other chair base that I had bought for parts for my original power chair. Um, this had four pull motors on it, but they wound up locking up or whatever. But I built this thing, I've got some photos, as sort of a vending cart. So I could run around at parks and stuff on hot days and you know sell cold beverages and things. Um, I very quickly got shut down doing that, like within 90 seconds of attempting to show up at a park. So anyways, um, I put the trigger on it, because that makes sense. I mean, ow, <laughs> left arm is annoyed. Uh, I got that tripod sitting there, but yeah, basically, this just allows me to drive this thing around and I've got a 24 volt power inverter in there. So it can fire up and run off of the chair's batteries and uh, probably needs cleaning, but yeah, portable traveling barbecue works great for me being in a chair because pushing those around is obnoxious and uh, yeah, wheelchair Traeger. If there's any videos about these chairs, I'll link them down below. I'm sure they all have videos. And this is an Invacure, uh, what is this? It is uh, some sort of TDX. 
but it's got the head array on it. Did a video about this as well. Um, this chair I keep around for like educational purposes and there's been a number of times that I have gone to this chair to try and figure out programming stuff when people have questions and also just to kind of learn about how head arrays work. Um, like I said, there was a video about that. And just a note, I do realize uh, in that video, I had the head array mounted really low. I know they're supposed to be really high on your head, but for me, it was easier to have this line here, basically my ears up here and this down lower. Um, I realize it's supposed to be higher, but for me, that way I could kind of look around and stuff. But uh, yeah, so there's that thing. I got this uh, here locally. There was someone that got a new chair and wanted to get rid of it. Uh, it does have an attendant control on it, so you can drive it around using this. Um, and it's a really interesting control system. It has a little toggle there. And then you press this button. And then if you turn on the attendant control, you can drive the thing around. But uh, yeah, cool chair, once again, use this for research and stuff. Then there's an M300 here. It's a little bit buried, but this chair I got from a local viewer. This thing was set up with a chin control and it's got, well, I had to poach the armrest bars off of it for something else, but this uses an Omni, which you might be able to see back there and a chin control. So once again, this is one of those ones where I had never messed around with alternative controls on a chair. So learning how to program these things and whatnot having this chair was a key thing for learning how to do that. I did unfortunately ruin the batteries in this thing. I left the circuit breaker on the back turned on. The batteries were still good when I got this warehouse, but I forgot and left that on and now the batteries in it are toast, unfortunately. So um, yeah, I'll have to replace the batteries in this thing at some point. Then steampunk chair, no real, no real explanation needed here, but it's a C300. We've got the Honda Mini Trail tires on the front. I've got motors from a 2017 F3 on here, or maybe it was an M3. Anyways, updated motors. Uh, it's got a 120 amp controller on it. Uh, this thing is sketchy and dangerous. <laughs> Link down below for that. When I put these tires on, within about 90 seconds, I dumped myself over in the front yard. <laughs> but yeah, this is kind of a cool chair. This one was in the green van when that van tried to kill me, and it kind of messed up the frame. I replaced this arm, but the frame is tweaked enough that I can't actually get the batteries out of there. And the batteries are super old. They do still work though. I think this chair has over 3000 miles on it, maybe more, let me see. Oh, okay, so this thing has 5,295 miles on it. <laughs> so yeah, this thing's uh, definitely seen a lot of action. Still functions fine. 2G seating. It's the plastic back, that's how you can tell. Uh, has recline, tilt, power legs, and a seat lift. Frontier V6, um, once again, not much needed to say on this one. This is my off-road chair. This is one of the few chairs that I bought with my own money, new. It was a demo unit. Um, I paid $15,000 for that thing. Um, the planets aligned perfectly for me to be able to buy that thing and have that much money. Um, I did Bitcoin mining back in the day. And well, let me just say, hindsight being what it is, I wound up selling about $12,000 worth of Bitcoin to help pay for this thing. But Bitcoin was only $625 a coin when I sold $12,000 worth of it. So quick napkin math, um, if I still had that Bitcoin, that's roughly $2.1 million. Um, <laughs> I'm glad to have the chair. Works great for trails and stuff. Uh, however, I shall never be selling that because, <laughs> well, am I supposed to say I'm into this thing? Like $1.8 million or 1.6 million or something like that. <laughs> oh boy. Look at, of course, the Quantum 6000Z back here. I've got a few videos on that. When I got that chair originally, um, I used that when I was flying to a trip down to Florida. This is also the chair, hybrid hybrid electric chair version 2.0. Also a video about that one. Um, and then what else we got here? Oh, the OG Amy systems here. This is an Alltrack M narrow base. Apparently they never made very many of these things, um, but this was my power chair when I weighed 318 pounds or something like that. 
Uh, it has one of these Ride Java backrests on it, but the metal on these is very thin and it just bends like crazy. Whereas the ADI backrest that I have on this chair, like it's solid. None of this metal flexes other than the cushion. Um, but yeah, this thing ran me well for a number of years and it's got an interesting Arnett thing. Um, it has brake lights. So when you slow down or stop, those come on for a second. So kind of an interesting stock Arnett seating lighting controller thing. And yeah, this chair still works. I think, uh, so eventually what I wanted to do was build what I call the ultimate power chair, which would be this Amy Systems power base with Permobile 3G seating on it. I've got a C300 I was gonna use for that, but I wound up using that chair for something else. However, I just realized I have a couple of other Permobile chairs over here. Yeah, so we've got two M300s back here. This one has complete 3G seating. Um, that one was set up with a direct backrest adapter. I know it's buried. So I might still do that project eventually um, where I pull the 3G seating off. It's gonna take a little bit of fabrication to get it mounted on that, but I think that would be the perfect power chair. And honestly, now that I mention it, let me, let me pull this thing out of here. Power on. My only complaint about Amy Systems at the time was their leg rests, which are actually sitting right here. I wound up fabbing these to work on something else, but the foot plates that at the time the Amy Systems chairs came with, the whole mechanism would bend super easily. So one of the quickest or earliest mods I did on this chair was, was to swap on Permobile leg rests. And it actually wasn't that hard to do. Um, so those are off of an M300 and I was able to get the actuator mounted in there with fairly minimal modification and yeah, so I think it would be cool to have 3G seating on this. These motors are so powerful and smooth and the suspension on this chair is like none other. It's actually sprung suspension. Uh, I've got another little video clip I'll post down below of how the suspension system works, but, uh, Really, really like the ride quality on this chair. Unfortunately, I'm not able, or haven't been able to get this seating set up in a way that I can use. Something about the proportions of the backrest and everything, I, I just, I've tried several times over the years, and since I've lost all the weight, I have not been able to get this thing set up in a way that doesn't trigger my dysreflexia. So, anyways, this thing's just hanging out right here for now. And, uh, Hopefully at some point I'll be able to get through that project and build the ultimate power chair. Then hiding back here is, I believe this is a 2017 or 2018 M3. That chair is complete, nothing wrong with it. Has the newer style joystick on it. Um, I got this originally, I traded some camera gear for it from a friend. Um, but the idea was I didn't have this chair yet and I still haven't done it. But the idea was I was going to use that joystick to film the Bluetooth instructional video. So obviously I haven't done that yet. Now that I have this chair, I don't need to do it on that one. But having this chair in the fleet is actually super helpful. I've used it to mock up some soccer guards and a few other things uh, that are specific to this chair. And also been able to answer some people's questions about how to repair things specific to that chair and whatnot. Um, I personally can't use an M3 because of the suspension. I did put air-filled tires on it. There's a video about that down below as well, um, but it still, the suspension wouldn't work for me. But uh, yeah, once again, still something I'm keeping around because it's come in handy multiple times for helping people out with stuff. Oh, then we've got another Amy Systems back here. Uh, this is one of the normal like wide frame chairs, which I, actually is just normal. It's this really awesome purple iridescent color. Not sure what I'm doing with that. Um, the power base is pretty wide on it. When I got this thing, it had 34 inch wide seating. So yeah, I shrunk it down a little bit, but I don't know, I haven't decided yet if when I build the ultimate power chair, if I'm gonna use this power base or the one from this chair. Uh, this chair I did do a lot of mods to. Like I've got additional headlights and like that one does anything. Then I've got some strobes and stuff on there uh, for crossing the street at night. It would be nice to leave this complete, but I also can't use it in its current form. 
So I don't know, we'll have to figure that out. Oh, and then hiding back here is the C500. This is the one that I swapped on the C500 VS motors that are seven and a half miles an hour. Still love that chair. It's got good batteries in it. I occasionally use it now and then, um, but it's kind of in the same category. It is just hanging around for, you know, specific questions people may have or if you need to figure out part sizes or whatnot. Um, so, yeah, it does get used occasionally, but that's kind of like the trailer queen weekend driver, you know, Cobra kit car that you may buy and only drive twice a year. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I really, really like the C500s. Then we have the generator here. This is a Pulse 6 power base. Um, this uses some weird early version. It's not Arnet, but it kind of is. Uh, this thing originally I had turned into the remote control leaf blower. And once again, links for all this down below. Uh, I wound up mounting this generator to it because like the barbecue, it's significantly easier to move this thing around while it's on a power base. So we've got a cord reel and stuff on here and whatnot. Got another complete Pulse 6 back there. I daily drove that chair for a while. Only has group 22 batteries, however, and the range is no more than seven miles. I think it was about 6.2 to 6.6 .6 miles that I would get off of that thing. Um, that one I'd let a friend borrow occasionally when he needed it, but he's got a brand new chair now. Um, so that one, it uses a complete stock Arnet seating control system. And I think in the first shop class video, I used this one as an illustration for why wheelchairs are getting complex. Um, but yeah, uh, that thing's sticking around though, just cause it's got the actual vanilla Arnet seating controls, which is really handy to have around. Yeah, those two M300s back there, um, I got those from someone. I'm gonna be pulling the control system off of one of them. And we're gonna be playing around with Arnet swapping a track chair. Uh, one of the local, um, what do you call it, reps or repair guys um, around here. I'm going to be working with him, and we're going to try an Arnett swap, one of those track chairs. I forget which brand name. TDX SB2, this thing has, you know, decent-ish batteries in it now. I've been trying to retrofit a wider backrest on this thing. I want to do a review on this chair. Obviously, this has been out for years now, but... Um, I can't use it currently with that narrow backrest. This thing is a like the most WC19 compliant wheelchair I have ever seen. That's that's a good thing. But everything on this thing is cross bolted. Every part, every piece, all the parts of the seat have at least two or three connection points to the rest of the chair. So that makes it a little bit tricky to swap out the backrest. I tried to take the backrest off of the Q6 Edge 1 over there. I tried for three hours to get that thing on here, but I need some specific hardware to be able to get that mounted on. So I kind of gave up on that for now until I have some spare money and I can buy some of the bracketry and stuff I need as it pops up on eBay. But this thing has the four pull sealed motors in it. Uh, it's got a seat lift, tilt recline elevation, or tilt legs and recline. Uh, it does have this basic Lynx joystick I will be using this eventually to see if I, because I don't know much about the Lynx control system right now. My new bounder when I get it is going to have like the REM 400 style touchscreen joystick. But what I'd like to do is get another one of those from eBay and see how hard it is to swap parts on this control system. I don't know if this stuff auto detects or how it works exactly, but I want to get into this thing and figure out, you know, all the ins and outs of the Lynx, that's L-I-N-X, control system. Um, that is an Invicare control system, but they have licensed it out, which is why Bounder uses it and uh, whatnot. But yeah, interesting chair. The ride quality seems pretty good on it. Um, so yeah, there will be more content coming for this when life stops getting in my way. Oh, and here's the guard for the soccer chair. And then... Oops. Okay. Um, so they just replaced this door earlier in the week and then it didn't have a deadbolt on it. And then they installed a deadbolt and then the lock was so hard to turn that I couldn't use my key to do it. So they came back today. They were supposed to paint in here, but I guess it's raining, so they can't do that. 
And also the sill plate is now two inches high instead of level with the ground. So they have to put a little asphalt ramp in. But also they said because of the rain, they don't want to do that. I don't know, you can use asphalt patch in the rain, but eh, whatever. So I'm gonna come back out here tomorrow apparently. And um, yeah, so anyways, new door. The old one was letting water in, so I guess I can't complain too much. <laughs> Anywho, back to this thing. Three-wheeled go-go scooter. I keep this around because every so often I have to go into some sort of building or some place that has ridiculously narrow doors. I can't sit in this thing very long, but it is narrow enough to fit through almost any door that exists. So I've used this thing a number of times in situations where I have to get into a small space. Um, so yeah, I think the batteries are actually toast in that thing right now. I had a, I had another style of one of these. Oh, that was it. I had another style of this little chair. I'll see if I can find a picture of it. But I sold that thing, and I think I took the good battery off of this and put it on that thing when I sold it. And I think this one was always bad. Anyways, this takes those little, like, backup power supply batteries or whatever. Uh, it just goes in that little thing down there. It's got a handle on it so you can remove it or whatnot. Uh, anyways, I'll get some replacements or whatever for that eventually. I'm looking around here trying to see if there's anything else I need to talk about. I think that's basically the fleet that I have right now and kind of my plans for some of the projects or whatever. Um, oh. There is a manual folding chair back there, like a hospital chair right there. I bought that one specifically so I could take it into the Willamette River and go jet skiing. Um, video about that as well. And let's see what else we got. Oh yeah, then there's a random jazzy front wheel drive something back there. Uh, I think that thing works, no batteries in it. Oh, electric lawnmower. So the remote control electric lawnmower is still gonna be a thing. I don't know when. I just, it's frustrating because not having a house and having to do all the stuff and whatever and building out the bus is really kind of, well, I mean, an entire year's gone by already, but are still gonna be doing that eventually. I've got the motors for it. I think they're in one of those crates over there, but we've got the control system and the motors for that. That's a 24 volt DC electric lawnmower. So it'd be really easy to convert it over to remote control. Um, so yeah, that's still gonna be a thing. Oh, I've got, yeah, right there is another set of motors for that three-wheeled scooter. So got those for some reason. Oh yeah, then the streaming desk. This was a golden, golden compass, I believe. Uh, that video, I remember the name, it was called My Computer Needs a Wheelchair, I believe. I built that into the streaming desk for a while. So that is just kind of another mobile platform. It's got the Link style joystick as well. But as you can tell, I like to use power chair bases as mobile platforms for things. Works out really well. Um, anywho. Yeah, warehouse. Oh, and then lest we forget, the C300 is in here. This is sort of my utility chair slash backup. This is if I'm running around outside working on stuff, I'll use this thing. It's a little bit smaller and lighter and I'm not as worried about getting this thing dirty or running around in gravel and all that stuff. This thing I also put the M3 motors in from like 2017-ish and it's also got a 120 amp controller in it. So another C300 that is super dangerous and goes faster than it should. But uh, yeah, just got sort of standard-ish seating on it with some side guards and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I think that's the last one in the fleet, I think. There's no way anyone could even know that. No idea what's coming next. Oh, I'm going to stop by the mailbox. I don't know if there's any. Oh, actually, hang on a second. It's somewhat shocking to me that I don't have any camera mounts in this warehouse. I think all of my filming stuff is in the bus. Anyways, we have a package to open. Yeah, and once again, I, I really need to paint the walls in this place. I'm going to do some sort of photo gray. It makes it, even if there's light right at me, having the giant white walls behind just makes everything all blown out and potato infused. Anyways, this package is from How I Roll. He sent this to me. I forgot it's been sitting here for a little while and I haven't opened it yet. Well, I did peek inside because I have to screen my packages because insane people exist and tracking devices and stuff. But anyways, 
we have, oh, I didn't know that was there. Okay, so anyone remember the old, like, I think it's, is this the X10 communication protocol? So this is a bunch of the wireless outlets. This one's branded as IBM, but it's the IBM Home Director. Yeah, so it comes with a remote control, and then we have receiver modules and a whole bunch of different lamp modules. These things are old school. What frequency do these work on? Oh yeah, it is the X10 protocol. I'll have to look that up and see. I think X10 was, I think it was 133 megahertz or something. I don't think it was 400 megahertz. Anyways, it was like a wireless home automation protocol. But I remember seeing these things back at Radio Shack back in the day and they were ungodly expensive. So yeah, this will be kind of cool to play around with. It's some old school um, smart home technology from gosh, late 80s, early 90s or something. Ugh. So one of the ticks, they call the symptoms of Tourette's ticks, um, has always been for years that I move my head to the side pretty sharply. And I don't know if it's because of that or my bed, but I've been having some pretty obnoxious issues with my neck recently and change of function in my hands and things like that. So it's been making things interesting in the last week or so. RR501. Let me look this up real quick. Okay. This is significantly more interesting than I realized. So it's 310 megahertz. Goes from whatever wireless controller you're using, aka this thing, to this module. This then plugs into the wall, and it uses that old school type of, of, oh good, you didn't put the tape on the sticker, excellent. <laughs> um, it uses the old school style of power line communication. So remote connects to this thing through the antenna via 310 megahertz, and then it sends out 120 kilohertz signals through your electrical wiring to these other modules, which is why these do not have antennas on them. So basically you plug this thing in and you set the little address codes for each device here. They all have the little dials on them and they have to be set correctly. And then this thing sends out data communication over the wiring inside your walls. Yeah, that's, um, I always thought that was kind of interesting. I know years ago, back east, they had some internet companies that would put a carrier wave through the power lines and you get your internet. I think this is like DSL days maybe, but you get your internet through the power lines or through your power company. So this is kind of a similar arrangement. So we're gonna have to play around with this on one of the live streams next time I live stream out here at the warehouse and uh, see, see how this works. Maybe take one of them apart. I'm really curious because this is of the date range where I think they were still using through-hole circuitry, like before surface mount stuff. But then again, I don't know. Yeah, and they're very, very um, adamant about only using lamps. Uh, I don't think these things appreciate inductive loads like motors and stuff. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, we're gonna take these apart and see what kind of relay they're using or maybe they're using, because I think some of these had dimmers actually. So I'm assuming there'd probably be triax or something in there. Maybe there's no relay at all, I don't know. Because this was back before relays were super reliable as well. So, interesting stuff. Thanks for sending that, Kelly. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be fun to explore for sure. Okay, so we've got some backup started here. I used a couple different machines to archive all of my video footage and whatnot, and some drive bays and network attached storage. Um, I used the three, two, one, one um, data backup where there's three copies of the data on two different like mediums and then offsite storage. Um, and this setup here handles two and three of that, um, the other media and the offsite backup. So anyways, working on doing that. I think uh, I'm gonna be back here tomorrow morning at 9.30 so they can finish that. So, um, yeah, I think we'll shut all this down and head back. It's about noon right now on a Monday, so I don't think traffic should be too bad. Wait, how many miles are on this chair? Uh, distance. Ah, so we're up to 555 miles on the new 2021 F3. 
Oh, update on the tires. Um, still doing pretty good. Like I said previously, the dome has worn off, but we still have a decent amount of tread. Let me turn so there's actually light on these. Yeah, that's that's still a pretty decent amount of tread. Um, yeah, cool. I, I really like these tires. And once again, they are available on Build My Wheelchair now. Um, not sponsored, but uh, yeah, tires. Uh, I guess it's time to get out of here. I did get the beer sign set up with that motion detector right there. So when that thing stops seeing motion for like 15 minutes or something, it'll shut off. Oh, I guess we should probably turn off the heat. Oh, by the way, I finally figured out, years ago my phone number got leaked and uh, it was because of this cart. Um, it was visible behind me in some of the videos, I guess. But, my phone number's changed multiple times since then anyways, and now I blacked it out. But anyway, so it's kind of funny. I uh, can't remember who it was right off. Someone bought me the thermostat from the Amazon wish list. Uh, it's got these little wings that close up on it. I just leave them open. But uh, that's been working great uh, for our five kilowatt heater up there. Um, Luckily, electricity is cheap in Portland. I think we pay just under eight cents a kilowatt hour here. Uh, I've got that set to 50, I think, so it doesn't get too cold in here. Um, I just don't want it to freeze in here, but then also I don't want these batteries getting super cold too. So anyways, uh, let's get out of here. Hmm, so the lock works now, but this is... Uh, not very tight, and this block off plate is not really doing its job. They did stick this piece of wood here. It's kind of hard to see from this angle, but we're gonna get a little asphalt ramp out here. And then also they're gonna replace these with actual security hinge pins because, uh, yeah. Uh, it's really noisy in here. Hang on, I can turn off one of these fans. There we go. So anyways, um, yeah, there's the video for today. I realize it's probably a repeat for some people that have been watching the channel for a while, but there's a lot of new viewers and figured I'd go over stuff. And also it can kind of serve as a guide of uh, videos to watch if you're new to the channel. So there's gonna be a whole list of stuff down below to check out that has to do with a lot of those chairs and everything. I did get, uh, my pulmonologist finally got back with me and I guess I'm gonna go see him in person and then I'm just, I think I'm gonna bring my laptop so he can look at the data on there. They're not allowed to like get the data that I have from my breathing machine for whatever reason. So I don't know. And then this thing with my neck going on, like I do have an issue at C7 and I'm sure with the Tourette's and doing that constantly doesn't really help anything, but I was hoping I wasn't gonna have to change doctors, but I don't know. We're setting up an appointment so I can go in. I think we might actually do another sleep study. Um, I won't be filming this one though. <laughs> that, uh, that last video was a lot of work years ago. But anyways, so hopefully things will get sorted out here soon. Um, cold weather's coming. It was snowing yesterday and today a little bit. Did not stick to the ground, but tomorrow hopefully I will have a build cheater and I'll make, uh, it'll be in a video Actually, I've got some other footage with Home Assistant and the cold weather stuff anyways. So we'll include the footage of setting that up in the, down on the plumbing luggage bay to keep the tanks from freezing. So anyways, uh, we're going to call that good for now. Thanks for uh, watching, and uh, yeah, see you soon.